This is a video in Clinical Medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Diagnostically, arthrocentesis is indicated to rule out septic arthritis in individuals presenting with a single or several inflamed joints. Arthrocentesis can also be used to differentiate between crystal arthropathies, such as gout and pseudogout, inflammatory and non-inflammatory effusions, and hemarthroses. It should be emphasized that a single inflamed joint should almost always undergo at least one diagnostic aspiration. Therapeutically, arthrocentesis may be performed to drain large effusions, hemarthroses, or to inject steroids or local anesthetic. Arthrocentesis should be avoided in patients with cellulitis overlying the site of needle entry out of concern of seeding the joint cavity with bacteria. Known or suspected bacteremia is a relative contraindication to arthrocentesis. However, if there is a concern of septic arthritis, the joint in question should be aspirated. The safety of arthrocentesis in patients with coagulopathy or who are on anticoagulant medications is not established. The relative risks and benefits of arthrocentesis and the use of reversal agents must be individualized. Prosthetic joints are especially susceptible to iatrogenic infection, and the procedure should be discussed with an orthopedist prior to arthrocentesis on patients who have undergone joint replacement surgery. The equipment you need includes a skin cleansing agent, gauze, 1 or 2 percent lidocaine, a 5 cc syringe and small needle for anesthetic injection, sterile gloves, a skin marking pen, an elastic bandage, and a sterile drape. For collection of synovial fluid, you will need one or two 30 cc syringes and a one and a half inch 18 gauge needle. Tubes appropriate for the estimation of cell count, crystal examination, and culture should be gathered. The knee joint contains the largest synovial cavity in the body and is thus easy to aspirate in the presence of a significant effusion. The cavity extends from the suprapatellar bursa superiorly to the articular surface of the tibia inferiorly. Note that the knee joint contains several bursae that do not communicate with the synovial cavity. The knee joint may be tapped from either the medial or lateral side. For the medial approach, the knee is extended or flexed to 15 to 20 degrees and the patella is located. Needle entry occurs along the medial aspect of the superior third of the patella, approximately one centimeter medial from the patellar edge. The needle is directed behind the patella and toward the intercondylar notch. The lateral approach uses the same technique from the opposite side of the knee. Informed consent should first be obtained. In this video, we will demonstrate the medial approach to the knee joint. Position the patient supine on a stretcher with the knee fully extended or held in slight flexion. A towel roll may be used if desired. Identify the landmarks by palpating the edges of the patella. Needle entry occurs at a point one centimeter medial from the superior third of the patella. The appropriate site may be marked with a skin marking pen. Next, prepare the site. The skin is prepped with antiseptic solution, a sterile drape is placed, and the superficial skin is anesthetized with 1% lidocaine. Approximately 5 to 10 cc's of anesthetic is then injected deeper along the anticipated trajectory of the arthrocentesis needle, with care taken not to inject into a blood vessel. After confirmation of landmarks, an 18-gauge needle with a large syringe is inserted posteriorly behind the patella. The needle should not come into contact with bone in order to prevent injury to the articular cartilage. Constantly pull back on the plunger as the needle is advanced. Once the joint is entered, synovial fluid will begin to fill the syringe. As much fluid as possible should be removed. If necessary, remove a full syringe and replace with a second empty syringe and continue the aspiration. The effusion may be milked to facilitate the removal of residual synovial fluid. The needle is then removed, the skin is cleansed, and the site is covered with a bandage. 
At the end of the procedure, make sure all needles are placed into appropriate safety devices. The appearance of the fluid should be noted. Normal synovial fluid is transparent and amber. As the number of inflammatory cells increases, the fluid becomes more opaque. Hemarthrosis will yield grossly bloody fluid. Aspirated fluid should be immediately placed into collecting tubes in the order of the priority of the diagnoses sought. An EDTA tube should be sent for cell count and differential, and a sodium heparin tube is sent for crystal examination. Ideally, at least 5 cc of synovial fluid should remain for gram stain and cultures. Complications of arthrocentesis include iatrogenic infection, localized trauma, pain, and reaccumulation of the effusion.